One of the jobs that I have had over the course of the summer is a swimming pool photographer. So I work in a swimming pool, I photograph families, primarily families with toddlers and young children, and then sell the photos at the end. That's been my job. Lots of people think I go under the water, you know, like with scuba diving stuff, and no, I just stand in the water, sometimes up to my hips, sometimes a bit higher if I'm pushed in, then all the way. Jump cuts. Unfortunately, I've had to re-record some of my footage, so there will be a few jump cuts between today in the orange and last week when I was in blue. Sorry for the confusion. There's a few things I want to cover about my job in this vlog, but I'm going to start with going through my work bag. So, jump cut to Rebecca going through the bag. So about a month ago, my lovely rucksack fell apart. I was distraught. The entire handle snapped off. So until I can afford to buy another one, I'm using this. This is a horrific bag that I think belonged to my sister many, many years ago from Primark. It was dark blue navy at first, and it's degraded over time. The only reason why I've kept it is because I was using this for transporting art materials around. So it's got oil paint all over it. Um, I am a bit embarrassed of this, but still, this is my bag. So what is in this bag? What do I take to work? I wear my swimming costume under my uniform, and um, I have a t-shirt that's given to me, and swimming shorts. I've actually been at work today, so these are quite wet, so I need to put them in the washing machine. Um, these originally came from Primark, I think. This was the first purchase I had made in Primark for, for about three years. In my job, I'm both the photographer and the seller, so I have to keep getting in and out of the water. Um, so I had to wear something that dried quite fast. Um, so that was handy. I think in the winter I need some thick jogging bottoms to put over the top when I get out. But still, for the time being, I usually carry lots of snacks. There isn't really time for a lunch break on my job. You sort of take the minutes where you can. So lots of snacks. I eat at the beginning and the end of the day. So you have crisps, cereal bars, fruit, although there's none in here now because end of the day. I like pears, actually. We have my flask. I think this was five pound from Tesco. I love these flasks. They're from Sistema. Oh, I needed a drink. This flask is quite easy to clean and I think it's, oh, hello. I think it's quite durable. I also love how big it is. You can get a lot of water in this. So that's that. I have some mints. Ooh, hand sanitizer. Working with children in that sort of environment, it's prone to lots of bacteria and germs and you're engaging with lots of different people. So having something like this is a lifesaver. The first week on the job, I was really ill. Really ill. I mean, it makes my hands quite dry, but it helps. The other thing I always have in my bag is some body moisturizer from Palmer's. Um, I've had this for a few years. This is just a random bottle from Boots, and I squirt this in there. Um, because I'm going in and out of the water and my, my skin is continuously soaked in chlorine, again, I find my skin dries out quite fast. So continuously applying this across the day, especially before I get in the first time I go into the water, helps my skin. I learnt from swimming that applying moisturiser before you get in the water just acts as an extra barrier. We have paracetamol. We have an Alka-Seltzer, extra strength. No, it's not a condom. It does look funny sometimes when this is just sitting in my bag. No, um, it's just medication that's supposed to help pain, essentially. But for me, it's fantastic at dealing with migraines. And working in a swimming pool environment, um, both the humidity, the temperature, the noise, but also the smell of chlorine is so strong that sometimes it does trigger my migraines. It's probably not the best place for me to work, I suppose, as someone that's prone to migraines, but hey. Having this in my bag has helped me numerous times. It's helped me get through the day. Literally, I had a migraine yesterday. Violently sick when I came home. I only take those when I'm at the end of my tether, though. I don't use that as frequently as paracetamol. We have lip balm. When I first started working at the pool, I turned up with a full face of makeup every shift. A bit like this, what I'm wearing right now. I have lots of foundation on. I very quickly learned that wearing makeup at a swimming pool is an absolute waste of time. Um, and it can make your job a lot harder. Walking around a shallow pool with lots of children splashing everywhere, one splash to the face and the mascara runs down the face, or if it's waterproof mascara, it just irritates my eyes all day. Jump cuts. I know it may seem silly wearing makeup in a swimming pool in the first place, 
but because I'm working with customers and I'm getting in and out of the water, I wanted to look presentable, I suppose. When I look tired, I really look tired. So it's taken me a while to stop wearing the makeup. Anyway, let's get back. Whilst I've had no makeup on my face, I have been wearing a tinted lip balm from Burt's Bees, and I find that this gives me just a bit more colour in my lips. It doesn't have the same staying power as my favourite lip balm, which is the First Day Beauty lip balm, but yeah, the colour is, is more important. It's just a very dark pink gloss, but it makes all the difference in my face. So I guess that's the only makeup I wear at work. We have my purse. Oh, lots of tissues. I have to wear flip-flops at work. Yes, these look terrible. That's because I've been wearing them all summer. And the last thing in my bag is a walking stick. I've been quite hesitant to talk about this because it's something I would like to discuss more in depth at another time. But for now, let's lightly talk about this, I suppose. I've been struggling with my knee for an extensive amount of time. My knee, my back, my hips, they're all related. I haven't yet done a video about how they're all connected and where I am with pain and stuff like that. But yeah, my knee, it's become a problem. My pain and my problems do fluctuate. Some days I'm limping more than others. Some days I won't limp at all. Um, but one thing I'm finding is at the end of my shifts, I'm struggling to walk home. <laughs> I've fallen over quite a few times. And then I just thought, you know, sod it. I, I need some support. I don't have my boyfriend with me all the time to hold on to. I think one of the reasons why I'm able to stand on my feet for nine hours a day is because for most of it, I'm in the water uh, or I have something to lean against standing behind a desk. Uh, but yeah, when I'm in the water, I, I have that sort of stability that I wouldn't have if I was just standing around here for nine hours. And this helps me get home sometimes. And one of the things I love about it is that it comes apart like this. I can collapse it. So if I don't need it, I don't need it. But if I need it, I can get it out. And it's pink, that's the other thing I love. As for the job itself though, it's like working retail on steroids. I've worked in retail and it was hard. I've done a whole video about my experience there. Um, no, it's harder than that. To work in retail, you have to be pretty tough emotionally. I don't regard myself as a tough person. I pretend to be tough. I pretend to be strong. I pretend to have my life together when in fact I don't. <laughs> Without my retail experience, I don't feel I would be able to do this job. It seems to combine lots of skills that I have learned from lots of different jobs. So it's, it's a lot to process every day. One big difference between retail and this is that in a retail position you have a product to sell to customers, it's already created for you. Whereas at the swimming pool I have to approach people, get them to say yes, then create a good high quality product with them, then get out of the water, adjust it a bit, and sell to them successfully at the end. It's an entire process. And it can be a challenge, sometimes. <laughs> It's the first job I've ever worked with commission and targets. So that's, that's fun. Overall, there's time pressures, deadlines, quick thinking, being spontaneous, high quality customer service under a variety of circumstances. I also feel that my experience of working with customers, people, has expanded extraordinarily. I'm working with so many children and babies. I'm also engaging in so many conversations about newborns. I feel I've learnt a lot. <laughs> the youngest baby I have photographed is nine weeks old. Due to the privacy and licensing, stuff like that, I can't keep any of the photographs that I take, so I can't show any to you. But over the last four months, I reckon I've taken about, I don't know, 4,000 photos of families and children. <laughs> For somebody who is anxious, and doesn't have good self-esteem and isn't confident, the fact I'm even doing this job at all is a massive thing. Whilst I am still experiencing the stress and anxiety, I am tackling that. I'm going in every day. So I am proud of myself for doing it and doing it successfully. This is sort of bringing me to the end of what I'm able to talk about in this vlog but I kind of wanted to say something as to what I've been up to the last few months. Well, actually I've had another job in addition to this, but I'm talking about this one. When I took this job on board, it was a temporary summer position. There's potential for me to do it just a tad bit longer, which is good. I'm just about to enter that terrifying period of unemployment. Um, 
In the time it's taken me to film this video, one of the jobs I was going for and got to the final two out of 140 applicants, um, I was rejected for. So my brain's not in a good place. <laughs> I'm so stressed. <laughs> I may be photographing babies till the end of time at this rate. <laughs> okay, I'm now gonna go and I will see you in the next one.